Praise God. Welcome to today's devotion. I'm glad that you're here. And even as we reflect on this, I would want to ask you to share it with your friends so that together we may hear what the Lord is telling us. Let's pray together. Almighty God, we love you, we worship you, we praise you for your faithfulness. Lord, would you minister to us? Open our ears that we may hear what you are telling us. Open, use me as your vessel of honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today, uh, I'm taking you back to the Gospel of Luke, chapter 4, but I will only read one of us. The passage which we read yesterday, that is the Gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, I will read verse Verse, um, I will read verse, verse 4, verse 8, and verse 12. Let's read. Jesus answered, it is, it is written, man shall not live on bread alone. Verse 8. It is written, worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Verse 12. It is said, do not put the Lord your God to the test, the word of the Lord. So here, uh, today's topic is honoring God's word. And like we have uh, um, been reflecting this week, the theme has been a life of integrity. We began uh, where we looked at confronting your hypocrisy, then we looked at confronting your sin, and then confront, confronting your evil, and then uh, honoring God, and today we will look at honoring God's word. So uh, yesterday as we read this passage of um, chapter 4 of the Gospel of Luke, we see where Jesus was being tempted by the devil and every time and he was tempted three times and every time that he would be tempted jesus quoted you know he he would say it is written uh what he meant by saying it is written is uh, he was referring to the scriptures and the statues that had been written written by god uh, for the children to be used by the children of Israel, of yes, of Israel. So today's topic is honoring God's word. So, brethren, if there is a generation that will be judged harshly, is our generation, because we have the Bible available everywhere in our gadgets, in our phones, in our you know it's available. We have hard copy, and we have many organizations that gives Bibles freely. And so, brethren, if there is that generation, we will not have an excuse that we didn't know simply because we didn't read the word. You know, during uh, the Old Testament, the children of Israel will, didn't have copies. So they, will, uh, they would wait for the scripture to be read for them, and then they would have to memorize it and then share the same with their children and have their children memorize the, the, the scripture and the statues. And then their children will also memorize and pass the same to their children. They didn't have any written. I mean, they didn't have the privilege uh, of having their own personal copy. But today the Lord has made it easy for us. We all have uh, a privilege because most of us have um, have, have you, you know, are able to access the word of God. So here, you know, where Jesus was responding like that, that it is written, it is written, it is said, it's because he knew what he was speaking about. He had read it. He didn't, he didn't only have the scripture. Remember, Jesus is the word. And that's what John tells us at the beginning of the gospel of John, that in the beginning there was word and the word of God. So remember he's the word, but even as he knows, even as he's, he knows that he's the word, he's also quoting the scriptures because he's leading us. He, he's, he, he wants us to be 
to see him as an example, as a role model of uh, him who was not only the word, but he also read the same word. And so he's, he's not just, you know, if you have not read something, you cannot have the audacity to quote it because you have not read it. And so brethren, the Lord, what the Lord is telling us this morning is to be in a place where we interact with the word of God. And not only read it during a service, for example, but read it again on a, again, because it's our manual. It is our compass. It is, you know, the one that will um, guide us on the seasons we are in, on where the Lord is taking us. And the way to go about it is by reading from, uh, you know, if, if you want to connect the story, because the Bible is a story of God and his people. If we want to uh, connect this story of God and his love for his people, then we need to begin reading it from Genesis. You know, when you read from in the beginning, uh, God created heaven and earth. When you continue, and continue all the way to Revelation where John the Revelator writes and says that, uh, 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 come, uh, Lord Jesus, come. You will have been able to connect the dots. You will be able to understand the story. So number one, uh, the Lord is calling us this morning or this day to a place of arming ourselves with the word of God because it's our sword. You know, many years later when Paul is writing to Ephesians, he tells them, put on the full armor of God. And one of the armor which Jesus talked about, which Paul talked about to the church of, of, of Ephesians, is the sword of the spirit. And why the sword? Because the same, I mean, the writer of the book of Hebrews says in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12, that, you know, it cuts. It is so sharp that it cuts. And therefore, brethren, we cannot afford to live a life of being so naked. We need to put on the word of God because the day you made a decision to be a follower of Jesus Christ, you, you announced that you are on the battle with the devil because you now crossed over from the kingdom of this world to the kingdom of God. And the devil is not happy that you are no longer his. So he would want to attack you again and again. And if you are not armed, then you will be vulnerable. You, then you are vulnerable. And that, and, and that means you will, be, you, will not, you will not win because you do not have a sword. You do not have an, a, an, a, a combat gear. And so, brethren, read the word of God. Um, read it again and, and again. I like what uh, um, verse 13 says. Verse 13 of that passage, you look chapter 4, verse 13. It says, when the devil had finished all, that, all this tempting, he left him until an opportune time, until an opportune time. So meaning that the devil had not just gone he was going to look for an opportunity to again come attacking. So what that means is that we need to be ready in season and out of season. We need to read the word again and again and again because we do not know when he's going to come. Peter tells us that, you know, he's out there roaming, looking for people uh, to devour. So then we need to look for an opportunity. I mean, we need to be ready for whatever time he'll come attacking, we will be ready to say that it is said, it is written. So read the word of God, memorize it again and again. Memorize the word, memorize it and have it in your fingertips. Why Jesus is saying that is because this word is in his fingertips. So he knows, so when the devil tries by telling him, by, by quoting another scripture, Jesus is able to counter that because he knows that the devil is quoting it out of uh, context. Why? Because the scripture was in his fingertips. And so the Lord is um, speaking to us. And the primary way that the Lord speaks to us is through his word which is written 
the Bible. And that Bible is the one that will help us to live a life of integrity. And so may the Lord give us the desire to read his word. Dear Father, we honor you. We love you so much for using your servants to write down your word for us to read it. Would you give each and every one of us the desire to read the word and the desire to have it in our fingertips and not only, not only that but also to do what to be in a place where we do what the word of god tells us we worship you and we praise you would you attend to the needs of each and every one of us lord minister to us have visit us in a special way may the lord bless you may the lord Make his face to shine upon you and scatter every darkness from before your path. And the blessings of God, the Almighty, Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.